day is his day. Amen. We all to celebrate. Come on up to that ground and join us up here. Let us join in with Corey and lift it like you love him. Come to the house of God. 
God to be able to worship in Him in spirit and in truth. We are blessed. Let us pray. Our Father and our God. Yes, Lord. We come now, Lord, thanking you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we know that we're celebrating the Christmas season. We're celebrating the birth of our darling son. But Lord, let us not forget you in this. So much is going on around us. So much is happening, Lord. But Lord, let, let, let us walk with you, Lord. Let us talk with you, Lord. Let us remember that you are a way maker out of no way. Some of our hearts may be heavy, Lord. Some of us, we might have tears, but thank be unto God for your word. But I have said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy, joy will come in the morning. I'm so thankful, God. I know now, Lord, I know that you are able to make ways out of no ways in our life. You are able, Lord, to open up blinded eyes. You are able, Lord, to let the lame go away to walk and stick. You are able, Lord, to let us keep on being the children that you want us to be. I'm so glad, Lord, I don't have to ask anybody that you are able to heal sick bodies. I, I, Lord, I'm so thankful for what you have done in my life. You moved COVID out of my way. Lord, we realize that it's in you, Lord, that we move and have our being. Oh, God, bless every church door that is open. Bless everybody that is praising your name, Lord. Not today, but praising your name, Lord. Because, Lord, this is the day that thou has made. And we're rejoicing. We're glad in it, God. God, we pray now for morning star. That she will keep on being the children growing the way that you want her to go. God, we pray for Pastor Moore. That he will say a word, Lord. That some soul will come running and say, what must I do to be saved? I'm preaching and teaching our God all the word. Now, Lord, now, God, we realize, oh, Lord, that we didn't come to stay here. We realize, oh, God, that this old earthly house that we're living in is going to soon decay, Lord, but give us a home, Lord, where the wicked will cease from troubling a home, Lord, uh, where the weary will be at rest. Uh, a home, Lord, where trials and tribulation will soon be over. This prayer we pray in Jesus' name. Let every child of God say amen, amen, and amen. God said his son. They call him Jesus. He
house. And so today we dare not rob you of all of your time. My Lord, my Lord. We came to say a word for the Lord. Amen. And perhaps to help us understand with clarity yeah. Yeah. why we celebrate Christmas. And it is a celebration. It is a celebration from Luke's gospel. Thank God for the Bethel Knights who are here and walking in as we speak. Thank God for your commitment. The Holy Spirit led Luke in Luke chapter 2 led him to record uh, the birth of Jesus and surrounding activities this way. In verse 8 of Luke chapter 2, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night and behold an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were so afraid then the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. You may be seated. From these words, I want to talk about God's passion for his glory. God's passion for his glory. Our God, my God. The birth of Jesus has a great God purpose tagged to it. And I know, I know we say and we say that Jesus was born uh, that we might live. And that is true. But I want you to know today that when I look at the whole of the Bible, uh, the Bible make, is making known God's glory is the driving force behind all of the many and the mighty miracles that he does. It is God's glory. I, I, I say to you this morning that God woke you up for his glory. Not just for you to unwrap the gifts under the tree. God watched over you and kept you all these many years 
for his glory. For his name's sake. And so often we uh, we choose to think about it another way. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, no text in all the Bible reveals to us as clearly as Isaiah chapter 48 verses 9 through 11 that God is wrapped up in pursuing his glory. If you want to know why Mary got pregnant, it was for Jesus and for God's glory. You want to know why the baby was born? It was for God's glory. So y'all gonna pray today? Isaiah 48, verse 9, wraps up and sums up how consumed that God is with his glory. He is a God-centered God. And everything he does is for the fame of his name. And we would learn a valuable lesson if we can ever learn that he saved us for his name's sake. For his glory, not just for us to get to heaven, we're going. Uh, but the principal reason for my salvation is for the glory of God. Isaiah 48, verse 9 through 11 says, For my name's sake, I will defer my anger. And for my praise, I will restrain it from you. In other words, when God's anger says, smack you down, God said, for my name's sake, I hold back. Because I'm invested in you. I'm, I've invested in you. I want the world to see what I'm doing in your life. You're here for his glory. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, for my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be profaned? I will not give my glory to another. My God, my God, when, when God healed my body, he did it for his glory. I'm so glad that he's in love with his glory. Because of that, I get blessed for his name's sake. Uh, when I look at the birth of Jesus, and yes, and Luke says, Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds, and the first thing they saw was the glory of God shining all round about them. And the Bible says, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said, do not be afraid, afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. God is fixing to do something that's going to expand the fame of his name. And I'm here to tell you, if God let it happen, it is designed for his glory. Uh, yeah, even COVID, the devil 
think that he's getting his kingdom established by it. But God said, I'm going to use it for my glory. Now, I don't know about you, but somebody in here this morning is closer to God than they used to be because of COVID. COVID has made somebody pray more than they used to pray. COVID has made somebody lay aside sins and weights that does so easily beset them because of COVID. God is working on uh, making himself known from coast to coast. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, God is concerned about his fame and his name. And so when he sent Jesus, when he got Mary pregnant by the spirit of the living God, and when he allowed her to deliver the baby in the manger in Bethlehem. It was for his glory. You see, God is spirit. And no man has ever seen him. But he really wants every man to know him. Yeah, he's spirit. He's invisible. Uh, you can't see him with the natural eye, but God wants you and I to meet him. He wants you and I to know him. So the reason he sent Jesus was so that we could see him. You do know that Jesus is the fullness of God. He's the express image of God. He is God in the flesh. You do know that, don't you? And God sent him that way so that we could see him. Outside of Jesus, you don't get a chance to really know who God is. But thank God for Jesus. Yeah, God sent him so that we might know him. He is invisible, but we, but he wants little boys and girls and young men and women, old men and women to know him. And there is no better way known to mankind to know God than to look at Jesus. Yeah, God sent Jesus that we might seek him and know him. Know him in his glorious state with his infutable attributes is necessary for real fervent worship. The reason folk can sit up in church and, 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 and knit and play puzzles and play on their phone, uh, they don't know enough about God. Yeah, the reason you can talk and frown and... Uh, fuss at folk in church and be mad during the worship service, you don't know enough about God. And Jesus came so that we could learn about God. God sent him. He wants us to know him. He's a jealous God. You could say he's a self-centered God. Now, you and I can't be that. We can't be that way, but he can. Yeah. God, we need to know him, and we need to know his attributes. And Jesus came that he might demonstrate who God is. God is a self-existing God without a beginning. He is unchangeable. He's called immutable. Our God is self-sufficient. He has no need for anything or anybody. And don't you ever feel that God needs you? God did what he did before you got here, and he'll do what he does after you leave here. God is all-powerful. 
And we need to know that it was seen in Jesus. Jesus handled demonics. He handled storms at sea. He handled sicknesses. He handled hunger and starvation. All power is in his hand. He came to show us God. He's always everywhere at the same time. Thank God that he died and went back to God, but because right now he's in Bethlehem of Judea in the major, but he's also at Morning Star Baptist Church in Tuscaloosa County, Alabama. He's everywhere at the same time, and God wants us to know that yeah, my God. Yeah, he's an all-known knowing God. There's nothing that he does not know. He knows your secret thoughts. He knows what you did yesterday and last night and night before. We hide from each other, but we can't hide from God. God is wise, he's full of perf perfection, unchanging wisdom. Our God is faithful. Jesus came to let us know he's a true God. He keeps covenant of love forever and ever and ever. That's the reason my salvation has no ending to it. Not because I'm so good, but the God who saved me is good. Matter of fact, he's better than good. The psalmist says, oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. And Jesus came to show it to us. I'm so glad he came. God is just, he is right and perfect. 24-7. I want to be that way. I want to be right all the time, but in spite of my desire to be right, I'm not always right. I tell my wife jokingly sometimes, I've been wrong lately, but I've been wrong sometimes, but not lately. But God has never been wrong. He's merciful. Jesus wants us to know that. Always compassionate, full of kindness and mercy. I heard him saying, I will have mercy upon whom I'll have mercy upon. I will have compassion on whom I will. So then it does not depend on the man or the woman who wills or how well we serve, but on God who has mercy. I'm glad that his mercy is not predicated upon my righteousness. Because he's so such a merciful God. When I was in my sin, on my way to hell with no God on my side, he stepped into my life. And I need to tell you, that's the kind of God that he is. Jesus went about doing good to everybody. Healing the sick. Raising the dead. God wanted him to demonstrate to us the love of God. God is love. God is holy. God is a glorious God. Uh, he's better looking than beauty. Yeah, greater than great. Most folk don't know that about God. So God sent Jesus so that we could see him. And oh, I'm glad to get to know him through Jesus. Thank God for that night in Bethlehem 
When Mary had a baby and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, God wants the fame of his name to go from coast to coast. God is full of grace and truth. Yeah, God is, uh, yeah, he is an all-time God. He is the express image, yeah, of himself. Jesus came so that we could know him. No wonder when Mary had a baby uh, and the shepherd uh, came uh, to the attention of what God was doing. The first thing they saw was the glory of God. God wants us to know how glorious he is. Oh, I'm glad that I know that I serve a glorious God. He is a, a wonderful God. Yeah, God allowed a virgin to get pregnant. Uh, yeah, so that she could, we could uh, know him. God let the baby be born. Uh, yeah, fully man and fully God. Uh, so that we could could know him. Uh, God can live in a man. He lived in Jesus. Yeah, if he lived in Jesus, he can live in me. Oh, man, that God lives on the inside of me. Are you glad? You're not standing alone. You're not by yourself. No. us in Galilee. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He gave food to the hungry. He water to the thirsty. He calmed the storm. One day he stopped the fuel procession and allowed the boy to get up and go back to his mother. We said
tell my story about how great God is. A few months ago, I sat in front of another college and he looked me in the face and said, we found cancer in your body. I heard him when he said, my body got weak. But while I was looking down, I heard a voice coming inside of me saying, Is there anything too hard for God? Anything too hard for God? I raised my head and I said, Doctor, what we gonna do? He told me, I said, let's do it. And I told him, I'm going to trust God, and I'm going to trust you. And I told him in that order. And I need to report to you, three or four months later, I went back to the same doctor. He looked me in the face and said, cancer? Let's go. I don't see it anymore. And he said the medicine work. Then he turned around and said, and prayer does also. I want to give glory to God. Everybody hear me? Peace. 
He's my everything. And I'm glad he gave me a chance to say it to you on this Christmas morning. Give glory to God, saints. Praise his holy and righteous name. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for preaching. The gospel have has been preached. And oftentimes when we get to this part of the service, we often think that the invitation is for the lost and it is. We think that the invitation is for those who have lost their way and backslidden. It is. But every time we hear the gospel preached, it is the invitation to all of us. Because having heard the word, God expects us to respond. Amen. This is the invitation. What a day to join Jesus and his church on his birthday. On this Christmas day, if you are outside of the ark of safety, amen. If you're not saved, if you're not sure you're saved, you can come and be saved today. All you got to do is just put faith that God sent Jesus to die for your sins. Amen. He was born, but he lived, but he died. And God raised him from the dead. If you can believe that in your heart, and confess that with your mouth. On this Christmas morning, salvation is yours. Sing. He's the name above all names. He's worthy of all praise.
somebody told you something sweet lately and they haven't given you anything? Amen. That's about how much they love you. Amen. Love is an act of giving. Did y'all know that? For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave. Amen. Amen. Having heard such a word from the Lord through this preacher. Amen. Worship, giving God glory. 
Amen. Say what Corey is playing. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Now and forever, let us all say. Oh. 